I'd always been drawn to the mysteries of the mind. Hypnosis, meditation, and all things related. I devoured books, immersed myself in the words of gurus, and hung onto every spiritual tale that promised to reveal the secrets of our consciousness. Little did I know that I was about to experience something beyond my wildest dreams. It happened during my first year of college. It was a time of mounting stress. Finances weighed on me like a boulder, midterm exams loomed ominously, and my trusty deep breathing and meditation rituals became my refuge. One fateful evening, after an exhausting study session for an impending test, I decided to dive into a transcendental meditation session. It was a practice I'd been honing for some time. I nestled on my bed, propped against the headboard, and closed my eyes. Time melted away, or so it seemed, for it felt like mere moments had passed when I sensed an uncanny silence. I listened intently, but there was nothing no distant hum of cars outside, no soft chirps from my pet bird in his cage. The silence was eerie, unsettling. Soon, a deeper disturbance gripped me. I lost all sense of my own body. Panic welled up within me, and I forced my eyes open. What transpired next still haunts me to this day. I was in my room, or what resembled it, yet everything had changed. Objects were displaced my cabinet stood where my desk used to be, and an ethereal bluish light enveloped everything. I looked down, my heart pounding, to find I had a body that I could move, but I felt detached from it, as if I were a mere observer. Driven by a surreal compulsion, I got to my feet and approached the window, gazing out into a nocturnal world. My clock displayed 10.30 in the evening, but before I could process this bizarre reality, my cell phone pierced the silence with an urgent ring. It was my mother, her voice trembling with fear, frantically informing me of my father's car accident. Her words struck me like a thunderbolt, and I hung up, my mind racing. Then, as if the world itself had unraveled, darkness suddenly descended. But I still had awareness. I knew that I hadn't passed out. The familiarity of my physical body washed over me. Subtle sounds from the outside reached my ears. I opened my eyes, and there I was, back in my room as I knew it. The clock, to my amazement, showed 10 p.m. My first thought was that I dozed off and was likely dreaming, attributing the prior events to mere hallucination. But, at precisely 10.30 p.m., the impossible happened. My cell phone rang. It was my mother. Her voice was echoing with the same frantic urgency as before. My dad had been in a car accident. Without a second thought, I bolted from my room, racing to the hospital where I found my father, thankfully, with only minor injuries. To this day, I remain haunted by that inexplicable meditation experience. Was it a dream, a premonition, or did I, in some unfathomable way, traverse time itself, leaping forward by 30 minutes? The questions remain unanswered, leaving me forever perplexed and fascinated by the mysteries that lie within the depths of the human mind. My relationship with my parents has always been smooth sailing. We share similar interests, enjoy the same things, and holidays usually pass without a hitch. But there was one Christmas when things took a strange turn, and a family memory I cherished so deeply seemed to be, what I can only call, a glitch in the matrix. As we gathered around the dinner table, reminiscing about old times, I decided to share a heartwarming story about my childhood pet Mickey. I painted a vivid picture of how this loyal dog had saved me from drowning in the river near the camping grounds where we used to visit. In great detail, I recounted the tale of Mickey's bravery and how much I missed that faithful companion. Then, something odd happened. The room fell into an eerie silence, and the atmosphere grew tense. My parents and cousins exchanged bewildered glances. My father, his face etched with confusion, spoke up, insisting that we'd never gone camping during my childhood, nor had we ever owned a dog as a pet. According to him, our family had a penchant for birds, and we'd cared for a turtle and a rabbit at one point. I couldn't believe my ears. My memories of Mickey were crystal clear, yet my parents were denying their existence. Desperate to prove my point, I began to recount our family moments with Mickey. I mentioned the countless photos we'd taken, Mickey sleeping in my room every night, and the joy he brought into our lives. My parents were adamant, flipping through family photo albums that contained no trace of Mickey. It was as if he'd been erased from our history. My mother, with a mix of frustration and concern, showed me each photograph, highlighting the absence of any images with my beloved dog. I assured them that I had the proof and would send them the photos from my apartment. I knew they were somewhere in my keepsakes, a testament to my treasured memories. However, when I arrived to my place, my heart sank as I searched through old photo albums, struggling to find those pictures of Mickey. There was only one. 
a single photograph of a young me and my loyal companion. I quickly took a picture of the photograph with my phone and texted it to my parents, eager to resolve the unsettling dispute. Their response, though, shattered me. They claimed that I had photoshopped the picture to perpetuate an elaborate lie. It was baffling, infuriating, and it left me with a gnawing doubt that perhaps something truly peculiar was at play. I don't do drugs, I don't drink excessively, and I was convinced of the reality of my memories. To this day, my family steadfastly believes that Mickey never existed, and they grow increasingly upset each time I bring him up or the incident by the river. Mickey has become a disconcerting enigma that gnaws at the edges of my mind. A cherished piece of my history that's been lost to some inexplicable void. One sunny Saturday afternoon, I set out for the grocery store. The day was filled with promise, and my spirits were high, boosted by my favorite radio station playing my go to tunes. All seemed right with the world until I found myself side by side with a car in the adjacent lane, both of us pausing at the red light. We locked eyes, and a strange sense of unease began to creep in. It was as though I was gazing into a mirror. The other driver was a perfect copy of me. Her car was the same color as mine car, our hairstyles and hair color were identical, we even sported matching tops, and we were even listening to the same music. It was like looking at my own reflection. The other driver looked shocked. I, too, must have looked the same way to her. As the traffic light turned green, the other car pulled slightly ahead of me, and my heart began to race. I squinted at their car, realizing it was the exact same model as mine, down to the last detail. The only difference was the last number of the license plate. It felt like a spine-chilling moment, as if I had stumbled into a parallel universe where everything was the same, yet subtly different. I was left thoroughly unnerved, wondering whether I had just glimpsed another version of myself, and I couldn't shake the eerie feeling that lingered long after we went our separate ways. I was racing against time, eager not to be late for my CPR training session. My morning had started like any other, with the usual routine of a refreshing shower and a steaming cup of coffee to kick-start the day, accompanied by a toasted bagel for good measure. The training was scheduled for a 9 a.m. start, and the commute to the location was a solid 45 minutes, so I made sure to leave my house early to account for any unexpected delays. As I hit the road, I felt a surge of determination to make it on time. The four-hour training was too important to risk being late, but it seemed that fate had other plans for me. Midway through my journey, as I cruised down the familiar road, time itself appeared to slow down. It was a surreal sensation. The world around me, from the other cars on the road to the music playing on my radio, all moved in a strange, sluggish rhythm. Even my own actions seemed to unfold in slow motion, like a bizarre scene from a movie. I couldn't discern how long this surreal episode lasted, but I remember the disorienting feeling it left me with, as if reality had briefly lost its grip on me. And then, just as inexplicably as it had begun, everything returned to normal. The flow of time reasserted itself, and I found myself 30 minutes late for the training. The trainer's frown and the annoyance on the faces of my fellow participants were hard to ignore. I couldn't offer any logical explanation for my tardiness, and I decided not to attempt one. It was a perplexing incident that defied all reason, an unexplainable detour through the twilight zone of time that left me in bewildered silence, forever etched in my memory. Have you ever heard of future life progression? It's a fascinating form of hypnosis therapy, akin to past life regression, but with a futuristic twist. Instead of delving into past lives, you leap ahead to explore potential futures. It's a bit like time travel for the mind. Intriguing, right? Well, I embarked on this peculiar journey after a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with a close friend about my ongoing personal dilemmas. My friend was adamant that I should see a psychic hypnotherapist who specialized in this field, assuring me that I wouldn't regret it. Desperate for answers and solutions to my problems, I decided to give it a try. The psychic was a friendly, welcoming lady, exuding confidence and skill. She listened intently as I shared the reasons for my visit, aiming to understand my concerns thoroughly. We agreed to undertake a five- and ten-year leap into the future, and she initiated the process with deep relaxation techniques. Through her guidance, I found myself in a surreal hallway, adorned with four doors, each labeled with numbers from one to four. These doors, she explained, represented distinct possible futures. I was to explore each one. 
Behind the first door, I glimpsed a path mirroring my current situation, an existence of indecision and persistent problems. The second door painted a grim picture a life worsened by poor choices. The third door hinted at improvements due to wiser decisions, though some challenges still lingered. It was the fourth door that truly captivated me. In that reality all my pressing issues resolved, and I even saw myself living out a lifelong dream. Having seen the possibilities, I chose the path behind the fourth door, the one that held my ideal future. The psychic then embedded a hypnotic suggestion that my life would now resonate with the frequency of my chosen destiny. I left her office feeling serene and hopeful, although, over time, that initial elation evolved once again into a nagging sense of despondency. However, to my surprise, it wasn't long before I noticed a series of positive changes. Astonishingly, everything I'd envisioned during that hypnotic session began unfolding in my life, but at a pace that defied explanation. Instead of the five-year time frame, my chosen path materialized within a mere year and a half. My problems dissolved and happiness flooded into my life. Yet, this extraordinary speed left me feeling disoriented, as if I had bent the very fabric of time with my journey through future life progression. It was as if I had unwittingly tampered with a matrix, altering the course of my existence in ways I could hardly fathom. I remember my friend telling me this eerie glitch in the matrix story as if it happened yesterday, even though it took place more than a decade ago. It was a dream that felt so vivid, so unsettling, that has lingered in my friend's memory like a haunting specter. In this dream, my friend found herself standing in the midst of a vast, ominous battlefield. The setting was draped in a shroud of dense cloud-covered twilight, casting an eerie and foreboding atmosphere over everything. My friend was dressed in a long, flowing white gown, and by her side was a mysterious man cloaked entirely in black. As they gazed to the right, they beheld a colossal army, their soldiers clad in pure white. Among the ranks were swordsmen, horsemen, and archers, creating a magnificent and intimidating spectacle. This army exuded an air of serenity, as if they were defenders of something sacred. But when my friend and the enigmatic figure turned to the left, they were met with a terrifying sight. An equally massive army, this one dressed entirely in black, assembled before them. The black-clad soldiers were formidable, their swords gleaming malevolently under the overcast skies. The black army started to charge forward, and my friend's heart raced as they anticipated the impending clash of these two forces. In a shocking twist, the first row of the white army advanced, only to lay down their swords and prostrate themselves in submission. Panic washed over my friend as they watched, helpless and horrified. The soldiers from the Black Army showed no mercy, mercilessly slaughtering the white-clad soldiers who had prostrated in prayer. Only after this brutal carnage did the White Army begin to respond, rallying to engage in a battle that now seemed pointless and devastating. The dream left my friend deeply shaken, as though they had witnessed a real tangible battle between opposing forces of good and evil. The vividness and realism of the dream were haunting, to say the least. What added an uncanny layer to this already unsettling story was a conversation my friend had with her online friend from Egypt not long after the dream. As they discussed their dreams, my friend felt compelled to share this nightmarish battlefield scenario. To her astonishment, the online friend mentioned an Arabic-language documentary about the end of the world that depicted the exact same scene. In the documentary, he said, a girl dressed in white was tending to the wounded of the Muslim army, mirroring the image my friend had seen in their dream. However, due to a lack of fluency in Arabic and never having watched the documentary herself, my friend has remained both perplexed and unnerved by the uncanny connection between her dream and this mysterious documentary. It was as if the dream had breached the boundaries of reality. I'm not entirely sure if this is a true glitch in the Matrix, but it's a story that stuck with me and held significant meaning in my life. This peculiar incident unfolded years ago during a time when I was grappling with profound life challenges. It was during these moments of hardship that I found myself turning more towards my faith and a profound connection with God, feeling that only a divine intervention could resolve the mounting problems I faced. One night, I had a dream that was unlike any I'd ever experienced. In my dream, I found myself sitting at a computer, engrossed in an online search for particular prayers. This, in itself, was unusual because dreams don't typically involve such mundane activities. But the strangest part was yet to come. As I navigated through this virtual quest for solace, I stumbled upon something that was etched into my memory a single word that I had never seen or heard before. Durud. 
I awoke the next morning with a peculiar word Durud etched into my mind. I couldn't shake the feeling that this was more than just a typical dream. The word echoed in my thoughts throughout the day, a faint whisper in the back of my mind. I decided to act on this mysterious impulse and turn to the real world for answers. I googled the enigmatic word Durud. What I discovered left me stunned and left me with a profound sense of connection and guidance. Durud was not just some random word, it was a term from the Urdu language, predominantly spoken in Pakistan. It referred to a specific prayer, one that I had encountered countless times in my life as a Muslim, the prayer where we beseech God to bless the Prophet, peace be upon him. I was no stranger to this prayer, it was a part of my religious upbringing. However, my lack of fluency in Urdu had obscured my understanding of its name. Now, with this newfound awareness, I realized that this prayer was the answer to my struggles. The dream had been a message, a prompt for me to embrace this prayer more frequently, to lean on it as a source of solace and guidance during my difficult times. I heeded this message and began to incorporate the recitation of Durud into my daily routine. With each utterance, I felt a profound connection to my faith and an increasing sense of serenity. And, remarkably, as I continued to recite this prayer, my life began to improve. My problems, which had once seemed insurmountable, began to ease. It was as if this peculiar dream and the subsequent revelation of Durud had been the guiding light in my darkest hour, leading me towards a path of solace and transformation. Whether a glitch in the matrix or a divine intervention, it remains a profound and meaningful chapter in my spiritual journey. I barely survived the horrors of the Serb siege of my hometown Srebrenica in 1995. It was a time of unbearable suffering, and all I wished for was the safety of my family and myself. Desperation led me to an inexplicable glitch in the matrix, a bizarre and eerie moment that defied explanation. In those dire hours of July 10, as the Serb forces closed in on us and started separating males from women, I found myself running through the chaos of the besieged city. My elderly parents clung to me, their terrified eyes reflecting the fear that gripped us all. Amid the mayhem, I spotted a Dutch peacekeeper, and in a state of panic, I approached him. What happened next will remain etched in my memory for as long as I live. In that moment of intense urgency, a moment when my survival instincts had overridden every other rational thought, I began to speak Dutch fluently. I communicated with the Dutch peacekeeper, understanding his instructions and providing him with information, requesting evacuation to safety. The peacekeeper, under the impression that I was a translator, guided my family and me to his van. He gave me a UN badge and told my parents to cover up with a blanket in the back of the vehicle. It was a surreal sequence of events that saved us from the brink of certain death. But here's the unsettling part I had never learned Dutch. My knowledge of languages was limited to Bosnian and a few rudimentary phrases in Russian. Dutch was completely foreign to me, its complexities and nuances a world away from my linguistic abilities. Eventually, my parents and I immigrated to the United States, far from the horrors of the past, yet the memory of that unexplained moment continues to haunt me. How had I suddenly acquired fluency in a language I had never studied? Dutch and Bosnian are vastly different, and the barrier between them is not one that can be casually crossed. To this day, I remain baffled by this glitch in the matrix. I will never be able to explain it. Laundry day is typically a straightforward and uneventful affair. But that day, an inexplicable occurrence turned it into a puzzle that I'm still trying to unravel. I remember heading to the local laundromat, just as I had done countless times before. Before loading my clothes into the washer, I meticulously checked to ensure that all the machines were empty, as I always did. I was alone in the laundromat, save for the hum of the machines and the occasional distant sound of traffic. After the wash, I transferred my clothes into the dryer, letting the rhythmic tumble lull me into a sort of drowsy meditation. Once the drying cycle was complete, I carefully folded each piece of clothing, making neat piles, and then bagged them up. The whole process felt unremarkable, just another chore to mark off the list. It was the day after laundry day when I stumbled upon the strange anomaly. I went to my closet, intending to get a short sleeve shirt, and there, hanging on the closet door, were a pair of men's pants that I didn't recognize. I couldn't place them as belonging to my boyfriend, and I knew he hadn't bought new clothes recently, let alone pants like these. What struck me as even more peculiar was that the pants were conspicuously dirty, covered in dust and grime. I asked my boyfriend about them, assuming they might be his but forgotten in the laundry. His puzzled expression matched my own confusion as he assured me that he'd never seen those pants before. 
We ransacked our memories, trying to figure out any explanation, but it led to nothing. No construction work had taken place around our house, and we certainly hadn't invited anyone over who might have left them behind. We lived alone in our house, and I worked from home, so I would have noticed any unexpected visitors. It was also important to emphasize that I had never cheated on my boyfriend, making the presence of these unfamiliar pants even more bewildering. And as I thought back to that day at the laundromat, I realized that my boyfriend had helped me put away the laundry when I got home. So the chances of me accidentally taking someone else's pants were slim to none, since my boyfriend would have noticed. The only explanation I can fathom for this inexplicable event is that it was a glitch in the matrix. It's as if reality itself hiccuped, delivering these mysterious dirty pants to my closet without rhyme or reason. To this day, the question of how they got there remains an unresolved enigma, a testament to the perplexing and eerie anomalies that can punctuate the mundane flow of our lives. I used to be a small-town petty criminal, no doubt about it. Back in those days, I thought I was slick, always on the lookout for an easy score. But one fateful night, I encountered something that made me question everything I thought I knew. It was a chilly evening, and the small town's dimly lit streets were nearly empty. The amber glow of the streetlights cast eerie shadows across the pavement. That's when I saw her. A woman strolling down the deserted street. She looked different though, not like the typical townies I was used to seeing. She was well-dressed, carried a stylish purse, and was utterly immersed in her phone, typing away. I saw an opportunity, a chance to snatch that purse and make a quick getaway. I figured the chick was rich and who knows what I might find in her purse. Of course, if there was no cash, I could always resell it for a quick buck. Anyway. I crept up behind the woman, my heart pounding with a mix of excitement and anxiety. Just as I lunged for her purse, she sensed my presence. Startled, she immediately spun around, her fingers gripping the bag as she let out a blood-curdling scream. I was in shock, my heart racing as she fought back with an unexpected fierceness, landing punch after punch with one of her fists. It was a bizarre and brutal struggle, one that I hadn't anticipated. But what happened next was even more surreal. As we grappled for control of the purse, something inexplicable occurred. In the midst of the tussle, she managed to push me away, and as I stumbled backward, I witnessed a sight that chilled me to the bone. In the blink of an eye, the woman and her purse vanished into thin air. It was as if they were there one moment and gone the next. I stood there, bewildered and disoriented, trying to make sense of the impossible. It was as if reality itself had glitched, leaving me in a state of shock and disbelief. I couldn't fathom what I had just witnessed. The woman's terrified scream still echoed in my ears, a haunting reminder of the bizarre encounter. Was this some kind of supernatural occurrence? A glitch in the matrix. That night, I walked away not with a stolen purse, but with a haunting mystery that made me a believer that we do live in a matrix, some sort of simulation. This event also made me question my life choices and compelled me to change my ways. If you enjoyed these spooky, yet true, glitch in the matrix stories and would like to hear more, hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for your time and support.